Hello everyone, this is Atsushi Fujihira speaking. We'd like to give you a presentation about our research. First of all, we are going to do a quiz. Raise your hand if you think it will float. Raise your hand if you think it will sink. Okay, look at the next slide. Raise your hand if you think it will float. Raise your hand if you think it will sink. Okay, look at the next slide. Raise your hand if you think it will float. Raise your hand if you think it will sink. Well, look at the next slide. Raise your hand. If you think it will float, raise your hand. If you think it will sink, okay. Next to last, raise your hand. If you think it will float, raise your hand. If you think it will sink, this quiz is the same one that a friend of mine, an elementary school teacher, asked his students in science class. He then put the vegetables he had just asked the question about into the tank. When the students saw the vegetables floating and swinging in the water, my answer was correct and why are they floating? The classroom was filled with the shouts of joy from the students. One child asked the teacher, if you cut a carrot in half, wouldn't it float in the water? Such a childlike idea. The teacher cut the carrot in half and put it in the tank. The carrots sunk into the water. Then, what do you think the child said next? You see what I mean. If I slice it, won't it float on the water? It's a very childlike idea. He puts carrots in slices in the tank. Whether cut in half or in slices, the carrots sunk in the water. You all know the difference between vegetables that float on water and those that sink, don't you? That's right. Vegetables that grow on the ground float on water because of the low density of air, but vegetables that grow in the soil sink because of the high density of air. However, he didn't explain to the children the difference between vegetables that float on water and those that sink, and ended the class by saying, let's continue with the next lesson. Even after the class was over, the children seemed to be curious about the difference between vegetables that float on those that sink in water. Most of the children seemed to have started investigating on their own the difference between vegetables that float on water and that those that sink after returning home. Some of the children even brought the vegetables with them when they took a bath and tried to put them in the bathtub. As you know, the ability to investigate on your own is called non-cognitive ability. Non-cognitive abilities, social emotional abilities, are divided into two categories. Abilities related to oneself, such as motivation, self-control, and self-affirmation, and abilities related to others, such as cooperativeness and compassion. This is a concept advocated by the OECD and other organizations. The guideline for the course of study revised in 2017 for elementary and junior high schools, set for three pillars of quality and abilities. The so-called three elements of learning, 
to be developed in students. The three pillars are knowledge and skills, abilities to think, judge, and express, and ability to learn and human nature. Of which ability to learn and human nature can be described as non-cognitive ability. However, the need to develop these skills was not first mentioned in the Bayes course of study, but has been clearly started in the basic education law in Japan. Article 6, School Education. Item 2. If so, then it is the non-cognitive abilities that support academic guidance. In Japanese schools, teachers are responsible for student guidance, life guidance, as well as academic guidance. However, many teachers in Japan tend to think that students' guidance is only for students with problems, such as bullying, violence, and truancy, and that it is to help them solve their problems. In the revised guidelines for the course of study, Chapter 1, General Provision, Section 4, Support for Children Development, clearly states that, in this case, the phrase student guidance can be rephrased as fostering non-cognitive abilities, which would be more in line with what the revised course of study called for. If so, it is no ignoration to say that student guidance is the foundation of academic guidance. The same is true for the junior high school version. And the same is true for the high school version. If so, it could be said that student guidance supports academic guidance instead of non-cognitive skills. The concept that student guidance is mainly about dealing with children's problems has not been dispelled. This can be attributed to the fact that the content of student guidance training conducted by the government and local governments is designed to solve problems such as dealing with bullying and truancy. In addition, when we look at the study guide plans for each subject in elementary, junior high, and high schools, we find that they do not include the perspectives of student guidance and student understanding in the goals section. What kind of children will we nature through this subject? Based on what has been said so far, I propose that student guidance training for teachers be abolished and that the perspectives of non-cognitive abilities equal student guidance and career education be included in all training provided to teachers. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening.